So in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can draw the Firefox logo using Inkscape. So to get started, I'm gonna copy and paste a copy of the Firefox logo into Inkscape. So I'll just do an image search for it and I will right click this and go to copy and I will paste this into Inkscape. And I'll make this a little larger so I can see it better while I'm tracing it. Now, whenever I'm trying to recreate a copy of a logo, I like to first try to visualize the shapes within the logo. And you can see there's a lot of circles or ellipses within this design. So I'm gonna use that as a starting point to trace over the logo. So I'm gonna grab my circles and ellipses tool and I will draw an ellipse going over the subject here. And I'm gonna make this a different color and bring the opacity down so I can see where the lines line up. So let me open my fill and stroke menu. I wanna be able to see through this circle so I'll bring the opacity down. And then I'm gonna grab my selection tool and I'm gonna to try to size this up so that it is matching with the logo. Now, if you notice, as I try to size this up, you can see the logo is not exactly a perfect circle. It's a little, a little elongated. It's more of an ellipse. So let me take a closer look here. You can see these edges line up pretty well, but once we get past the ear, the line starts to curve in a little bit. So to adjust this, let me convert this to a path and I'll grab my nodes tool and I'm gonna take this top node and just drag this down a tiny bit until the contour matches the ear on the left hand side. And then over here on the tail, this looks pretty close. Maybe I could take this handle and bring that up a little bit, or maybe not. I can go back and adjust that later. That part won't be too hard. So I have the circle now, or the ellipse rather, that matches the subject. Now I'm gonna subtract the circle from within the center of the object here. So let me draw another circle. I'll draw this one right on top. I'm gonna to make this one a different color so I can see it a little better. And let me position this circle where it ought to be. And as I do this, I'm gonna to have to adjust the opacity of these objects I'm working with because it becomes more difficult to see them as you stack them on top of each other. So let me scale this down a little bit. And much like before, this isn't a perfect circle either. It's more of an, e an ellipse, so I'm gonna have to adjust it accordingly. And once I have it matched up nicely, I'm gonna select both of these and I will do a path difference so that I now have this shape here. I can use this shape to shape the fox in the logo. So let me put that back. And now I want to draw the head and the ears and then the tail as well. So to do that, I'm gonna grab my pen tool and just manually draw this. So let me grab the pen tool uh, you can also access it with the letter B on the keyboard. I want to make sure I have the correct mode chosen and I'll start this line just outside of the circle and I'll start placing points uh, right about every few, every few inches. And I'm going to go back and manually change the contours of these lines. So don't worry about them being hard corners. Place that right about there. And I'll bring this one back to the starting point. So now what I can do is, let me go to my stroke style paint. I'm gonna bring down the size of this a lot. I'll make this 0.2 and I'll grab my nodes tool and now I can just click and drag this node or this path and change the contour of the path so that it matches the subject's ear. And as a matter of fact, I'll think I'll get rid of this node right here because I can make this line smooth without having that extra node in there. And it always looks smoother. The fewer nodes you have, the more smooth and fluid it looks. So let me change that. Now I can do the same thing over here with the nose. I can pull this line out and I can adjust these handles so that it matches the outline of the subject. You may have to adjust the placement of these nodes as you do this. Okay, then I'll adjust this a little bit as well. And I'm gonna have to adjust this a little bit because this isn't exactly as accurate as I'd like it to be. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let me apply a fill to this so I can see it a little better. I'll make this red. I'll get rid of the outline by holding shift and clicking on that X and I'm gonna bring down the opacity of that as well. 
And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna draw a shape, another shape to match the end of the fox here. I'm gonna match his tail or the break in his tail right here. So let me go back to my pen tool and I will start this point out here and I'll place another point there and then another just outside of the circle. And then I'll bring this through back to the starting point. Don't worry about it going outside like that. We're gonna fix that in just a minute. So let me make this, let me update the line of this. I'm gonna make this 0.2 in size. I'll grab my nodes tool and adjust this now as well. And then I'll fill this in with a different color as well. And I'll remove the stroke, bring down the opacity. And now we can select all of these shapes. So I'm gonna shift click all three of these shapes that I've created and I'll go into my shape builder tool and I will draw the fox as I need it to be. So I'm just gonna draw a line through the areas I want to keep. And then I'll go back to my selection tool and there you go, we've drawn that part of the fox anyway. So let me make this a different color. Let me bring this down a little bit. The problem I have now is in the corner over here where the neck is. It's not exactly smooth like it is in the original logo. There's a little bit of a corner there. So I'm gonna fix that by going to my nodes tool and just making a very minor adjustment. Again, we want these handles to be parallel with each other. And to ensure that you can hold control and click on the node and it'll make it so that those handles are parallel. And I'm just gonna update this now to make sure the contour is accurate. and maybe even fix the nose. I noticed the nose sticks out a little more than the way that I have it. So now I'm gonna draw this part of the fox's mouth. And to do that, I will go back to my pen tool and I'll start this line right about here. I'll place a point there, place another point there, and then another point down here where the line ends, and then I'll connect it back to the starting point. Let me change the size so I can see the edge of the lines a little better. Grab my nodes tool again, and then make the needed adjustments to this. And once that's drawn, I'll make that a different color, remove the outline. And instead of using the shape builder tool for this one, I'll just grab a copy of this. I'll make a duplicate copy of the larger shape and then select that with the other shape at the same time and do an intersection. I'll go to path intersection and there we go. Now that part is finished. Now let me bring down, let me bring down the opacity of that as well so I can see everything else through it. And now I'm gonna draw this second ear out here. So to do that, I'm gonna grab my pen tool I'm gonna turn on snapping for this one because I wanna snap right to the corner in here. And then I'll turn snapping off and I'll place a point there and then place a point down here and then back to the starting point. We wanna make sure the lines go within this boundary here. And don't worry about that sticking out. We're gonna layer this beneath the other subject once everything's done and we're filling it in with color. And let me bring down the size of the stroke. Okay, that's looking good. Let me color that in as well. I'll make that red, remove the stroke, and I'm gonna layer this beneath, I'm gonna position it beneath the green object. So I'll just lower this one step and I'll bring down the opacity of that as well. Okay, so now we're going to draw the circle going within the middle of the fox here. So to do that, we'll just grab our circles and ellipses tool and click and drag to draw a circle. And this shape is more representative of an actual circle. So all we have to do is adjust the size of this and position it as needed. And for this, I will lower this down as well. So let me lower this down until it's beneath everything. And now we can draw the tail, which again, we'll use the pen tool for this. Grab the pen tool, place a point, 
place another point and whoops there we go place another point down here and finish this up going through the the rest of the artwork and I'll change the size of this as well grab the nodes tool update this Fill this in with a color. I'll go with blue for this one, just to differentiate it. Bring the opacity of that down, and I'm going to lower that beneath everything else as well. Okay, so there's one more shape. We've had, we have pretty much most of the design made. There's only one more shape we have to generate, which is this shape down here, this sort of crescent, crescent moon sort of shape. So to duplicate, to create a copy of that, I'm going to duplicate this object, the original green object. I'll right click that and go to duplicate, and then I'll duplicate it again and I'll make this one blue. And then I could just move this second one up like that and try to try to envision where that is. I'm gonna have to bring down the opacity of that even more so I can see where that boundary is. And let me try this again. You can see it starts right about here and it comes in further over here. It's not exactly centered, so that's something to pay attention to. So make let me make sure I have this accurately pl uh, placed. That looks pretty good. Let me update that side a little bit. There we go. Now I'll select both of these and go to path difference and then path break apart. And I'll deselect everything except for this shape right here. Well, I'll deselect only this bottom part of the shape so that everything else that's left here, I can just press delete on the keyboard and get rid of that. And this shape down here, we now have. Okay, so all of the shapes of the design are made now. So let me get the original, let me grab that original logo and bring that to the top and move this out of the way. And now I can select the design and bring the opacity up to 100%. And now we can start coloring this thing in. Now this is the most challenging part of trying to recreate this design because this design uses a lot of elaborate gradients and it's really hard to simulate exactly this exact look, but we can get pretty close. So let me first make everything the same color so that those colors don't distort uh, my vision of what I'm trying to do while I do this. And I want to select the original shape. And it looks like this original shape right here has a pink shade that transitions to yellow. And along the way, you get a little bit of orange there. So let me grab my gradient tool. Or you know what, first let me go to the fill tab and apply a linear gradient. And then I'll grab my gradient tool. And I'm going to select this node and then press D on the keyboard to grab my dropper and sample that shade of pink down there. And then I'll go back, I'll press G to go back to my gradient tool, select this stop right here, and then press D to go back to the dropper and sample that color. And now I can go back to my gradient tool again and position these handles as needed. So it looks like the most yellow is over here on these tips of the tail and then the most pink is over here. So I'm going to try to make that as close, as close to that as possible. And now it looks like this shape down here is a darker shade of pink, but it transitions to a transparent gradient. So let me do that as well. I'm going to grab my dropper tool, sample that color, go back to my gradient tool, and I will apply, apply a linear gradient. And this time I could just take this side and move this over. And it looks like this already has a pretty good placement. It starts to transition to transparency, but it's not completely transparent. You can still see a little bit of it in there. So right about there looks pretty close. And now I can take this shape right here, and this one, it doesn't look like it uses a gradient, or if it does, it's very subtle. So I'm just gonna use a single color for that. And maybe I'll even sample this color over here just for some consistency. There we go. And now I will draw the gradient of the second ear. So let me choose that second ear, and let me apply a linear gradient. Press G to get the gradient tool, and I'm gonna sample some colors from within the design here. Now I can update that. And then I will apply color to the tail. So let me do the same thing. I will apply a linear gradient. I'll choose a shade somewhere down here. And then I'll take for this one and I'll take a shade from up here. And I will place this one down here and this one up here. 
Now in the original design, this part of the shading down here is a little more subtle, so I wanna make this a little more subtle, bring that down a little more. Maybe I'll even take this note and bring that down as well. And that looks a lot better. And for the final part, we just have to now create the radial gradient within the center of the circle here. So let me grab my selection tool. Let me select this circle, apply the linear or the radial gradient. Grab the gradient tool and choose my shades. I'm gonna select that stop, press D to get the dropper. I'm gonna sample that shade of blue in there and I'll do the same thing with the outer stops. I'll press G to get back to the gradient tool, select on that and then choose the shade of purple. And now I can go back to my gradient tool and just position this as needed. And I may update these colors a little bit. They don't quite look right. Again, this is the most difficult part of the design to simulate are these gradients. So let me update that a little bit. And I'll zoom out. And as you can see, we are finished. We were able to draw a vectorized copy of the Firefox logo or a close replica anyway. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.